Last week I spoke about faith being in your mouth. And this week, it's a continuation. I'm continuing this week, and the title of my message for this week is Fight a Good Fight of Faith. Amen? Amen. We are going to fight a good fight of faith. Last week I said that faith is in your mouth. As long as you have the word of God on the inside of you, you have faith in your mouth. Amen? Because what the heart is full of, your, your mouth will flow. Okay? So, as believers, we need to know one thing. And that is that we are constantly going to face battles. It's nothing new. We've seen it through scripture. How these men of God that God used, they came through battles. They do just get things like this quickly. They have to go through things in order to get it. Amen? So, as believers, we know that there will be battles. That we are going to face these battles. And we're not going to go to war in combat out here and go against the lens and go physically fighting people. No. Our battle that we are going to fight is a spiritual battle. Amen? It's not a physical one. So, I trust this evening at the end of this teaching, that you will get freedom from fighting the good fight of faith. As I start unpacking it for you. Amen? Very often, people will pray and say, Lord, give us faith. Lord, can I need more faith? But there's something wrong with that prayer. Because God cannot answer that prayer. Amen? Because faith is not something you ask for and given to you. We are taught in the Word of God that faith comes by hearing and by hearing the Word of God. So faith comes as we sit in the Word of God. Amen? As we go through the Word of God, as we gain knowledge out of the Scriptures, that's how faith will come. Amen? So when knowledge comes, Faith is an automatic response. So faith automatically comes on the inside. So many believers, you see, run to a mountain. Many of them fast. Many of them go into what they call travailing prayer for the spirit. But God says, His instruction is simple. Attend to my word. Be in the word. You will get faith. Just stay in my word and you will receive the faith. There's no need to go on a fast because you're just going to starve yourself. Amen? You're not going to gain anything other than using a few kilos. <laughs> but you're not. That faith will never come. Because faith comes by hearing. And the hearing comes through the word of God. Amen? Amen? And if someone tells you you can get it any other way, he's lying. Okay. And you have all the right to tell him you lie. Show it to me. You are taught in this church. Whatever you hear, whatever someone comes with an opinion, where is it in the Bible? Okay. If he cannot show it to you in the Bible, do not accept it. Because if you say that faith doesn't come by hearing, you hear the word of God. You say that that verse is in and in essence, you say the whole Bible is right. If you say one thing is not right in the Bible, Amen. then you just invite God and you go home. So, this can be a great hindrance for some people. And this is why a lot of them lack the understanding of faith. Because they need to know that faith is in the Word of God. There's no shortcut. That is why you see many church people run to those churches because, oh, we want a prophecy. Yes, we want a miracle. 
Yes, we want to see the shaking, we want to see the people rolling on the floor. But there's no word, there's no substance. And when they go, nothing changes. Their, their life stays the same. So, we also hear some people say, I'm trying to believe, I'm trying to have faith. All they need to do is get familiar with the Word of God. Get close to the Word of God. There's no reason to say, I'm trying to get faith. Faith will come. Amen? It's that simple. Amen? It's, it needs to become a reality in our lives. Real faith is a product of the knowledge of the Word of God. If you see a person with faith, you know that person is in the world. Amen? It takes no effort. There's no other effort that you need to obtain faith other than opening up the Bible and reading the Word of God. Putting on Christ's teachings and listening to the teachings. Because as soon as the light of that teaching or the light of the Word comes up inside of you, as soon as it enters you, that is when faith has entered you. You now have the faith for something. Amen. Amen? Amen? So the only fight we as believers are meant to fight is the fight, the good fight of faith. That is the only fight. We're not going to go first fighting with other people because that's not what it says in the Bible. It says fight the good fight of faith. Amen? Amen. We need to get out of the wrong fighting and step into the right one, which is the fight of faith. Amen? Yeah. We hear many Christians as I say, oh, we're going to go fight the devil. Wrong fight. That's the wrong fight. We don't fight the devil. Because the devil was fought a long time ago. Jesus went and fought to the devil. He went and subdued him 2,000 years ago. So you and I don't need to go and fight something that has already been done. Amen. Amen. So we hear others say, let's go fight sin. Mm. You can't fight sin. Because Jesus already did that. He came as a sacrifice to take on our sin. Mm. So we're not going to fight sin. Because Jesus was the cure for the sin. Amen. So we put, we put sin away by sacrificing himself. And we see that in Hebrews 9.26. In Hebrews 9.26, it tells us that. It says that. It says, He then would have, would have had to suffer often since the foundations of the world. But now, once the end of the ages, He has appeared to put away sin by sacrifice, by the sacrifice of himself. So you see, sin is not the problem. But the sinner is the problem. The sinner needs to find Jesus. The sinner needs to find the cure who is Jesus. Amen? Amen? And that will take the sin problem out. Amen? So we see there's a lot of confusion in the body. Also, living by faith. Amen? There's things that people will call faith, but it's not faith. And then when they believe in this silly philosophy that's supposedly faith, but it's wishful thinking, and when it doesn't happen, they start blaming God and they say, no, that didn't work. I tried it, it didn't work. But that's because of ignorance. That's because of confusion and wrong teachings about living by faith. Amen? Amen? You see, they become discouraged. They discourage and they say, God let them down. God never lets anyone down. Amen. Amen? He has never failed to keep his word. That's why his word says, He's not a man that he should not. He, is, he gives preference over it. He, 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 the word says that he honors his word above his name. So the word needs to be our first priority. Amen. Amen? There's no re reason for us to question the goodness and the faithfulness of God. Because faith, what faith is, it's saying that you fully trust in God. Mm -hmm. Even when you don't know, even when you don't know how it's going to happen, you don't know why you're going through this, 
or you don't, you just don't know. But that is what faith is, is saying, Lord, I don't know. You need to help me in this situation. Okay. Amen? Amen? The world tells us all the time, you've got to see something to believe it. But in the kingdom of God, believing it is seeing it and touching it. So when God gives you a word, you've got to believe it. Because if you believe in that word that is given you, you're going to touch it, you're going to experience it. Amen? Amen. You're going to see it happen in your life. That's why you must trust God. You must stop trying to figure things out in your life. Amen? Amen. We must stop doing it because we have a habit of doing it. We want to figure out how God is going to work it out. And God says, no, that is my job, not yours. Your job is just to trust me. And here's a fact that you will never know. The fact of life is you'll never know all the answers in this life. He will not show you everything. Or he will not tell you everything. Because if he did that, you wouldn't need faith. Amen. Amen? So you don't have to know everything in order to fight the good fight of faith. It's called a faith fight for the reason. It's not a knowledge fight, a fight about knowing how's God going to make that work? How's God going to fix my situation? How's God going to heal me? It's a faith fight. saying, I know you can do it. I know you've told me in your word that you heal people. So I bet he is his mind. Amen? This is the only fight where you don't need all the answers for. The only fight. And this is the only fight that you will win as long as you sit back and you let God do it. Amen? Amen. That's not, like I said, it's not a knowledge fight. It is a faith fight. Amen. You can trust when you don't have the answer. When you don't have an idea of how or when it's going to happen. But that, that test is saying, I'm going to trust you. I don't understand. I'm going to trust you. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I'm going to trust you. Amen? Amen. That's what's going to get through, you through the most difficult things you can face in your life. That is the thing that's going to carry you. It's knowing that God is going to carry you through. All I need to do is focus on Him and that confusion. Through that confusion, through that tears, and through that worry, I need to focus on Him because He's going to bring me through. Amen? You say, Lord, I don't know how, I don't know why, but one thing I know is that you are a good God. I will trust you. You are real. I believe in you. I hold on to you. And I will never stop. That should be your call, your response. Each and every time you go through any challenge, anything you're facing, that should always be your response. Amen? Amen. That's why Isaiah 41, Isaiah 41 verse 10 says the following. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. That's what his word tells you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. 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 So you see, he will set your feet on the solid rock and he will bring you through it. And when I say the solid rock, I mean you set your foot, your foot on the solid rock, which is the word of God, and he will carry you through. Amen? When you say, Lord, I trust you in this, you're pleasing God. When you say, Lord, no matter what, I'm going to hold on to your word, you are showing him that you trust him. He is pleased. He's, gonna, he's not going to stop fighting for you. He's not going to. He's not going to delay doing what he's promised you. Amen. Now, one thing you need to remember that we are told in the Bible about how when the word comes, the enemy will come and steal it from you. So in life, there's going to be a lot of things that's going to come and try to shake that faith to take you away from what you're believing, from believing, from believing that word is given you. 
things are gonna come that's broken. The enemy will come because that's his whole thing, was to take you out of the will of God. Amen. But what you see, what you hear, and what you feeling is not is not what God wants you to do. You will have to hold on to what God's word says. Amen. So are you a faith fighter? That is my question. Are you a faith fighter? Because when you fight the good fight of faith, you are regarded as a fighter. And what type of fighter are you? A fighter of faith. You're a good faith fighter. Amen? Amen. And a good faith fighter, a faith fighter cannot allow himself or herself to become scared. Can not allow himself or herself to be talked out of your belief. Cannot allow you to reason your way out of your faith. Nothing can come and do that. If you are a good fight fighter, faith fighter, sorry. And if you, and if they do, they will run into a big fight with you and I. Because you're standing on the word of God. Amen? So don't try. They will try to come and see you. They will try to make you doubt the word of God. If it's his God, if it's his word or not, because of your own thinking. But that's when you're supposed to go into your faith mode. That's when you start to go into attack mode. Not physically attacking you. No, please don't do that. Because you do not fight out. That was not against flesh and blood. Amen? So anything else that comes and tries to get you not to believe God is spiritual. It's the enemy. Amen? Amen. So you need to get some strength into you. So that when this comes, you are able to stand and say, no, I am not accepting it. And the way we get our strength is through the word of God. Amen. 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 We get our strength from what God says. So, it's not the will of God. And there's not many ways to win. There's only one way to get to God. And that is through His word. Each time you pray, you go and pray, and you go into the word of God. That's how you access God. Amen? Amen. There's no other way to fight the fight of faith but the word of God. So what he says in his word is known as the word of God. The will of God. And you need to be willing to oppose anything that comes to try to steal that word away from you. Amen? Amen. Amen. 2 Timothy 4 verse 1. 2 Timothy 4 verse 1 says, In the presence of God, and of Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead. And in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I will give you this charge. Okay? He's saying to us in verse 2 of 2 Timothy 4, preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Verse 3 says, For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine and say instead to suit their own desires. They will gather around, around them a great number of teachers who will say, what the each ears wants to hear. They will turn the ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths and fables. Amen? Amen. So we see many don't want to hear the word of God, the truth of His word. And we are taught to question what we are told through verses of scripture. Don't just accept what you have been told about the world, about the word of God. Always let them show it to you 
or two or three witnesses in the Bible. Amen? 1 Timothy 6 verse 12. And this is this is my teaching. 1 Timothy 6 verse 12 says fight the good fight of faith. And lay hold of eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Amen. Amen. So what does this mean? There are battles of spiritual. So between you and your God and, and in your God given miracle, they will be a fight. Amen. Amen. You need to have that reality set on the instant. There is going to be a fight. When God gives you a word, when God gives you a promise, there's always going to be something that's going to come and fight that word that God has given you. Amen? So once we get that consciousness on the inside of us, that's, that, that's a battle, and then we're going to have to face it. We cannot shy away, move out and say, ah, no. You're going to have to go and face the battle. Amen. You have to work your way through it. Amen? Amen? And once that reality is settled on the inside of you, you will become what they call battle conscious of where that, that battle is going. Amen. Amen? So you know the battle is going to be there. So you need to get ready to resist. So you need to prepare yourself. And how do you prepare yourself? Being in the word. That goes back to the word. Amen? Amen. Deuteronomy 2 verse 24 says the following. Deuteronomy 2 verse 24. And here we see an example of that. It says, Rise, take your journey, and cross over the river on Look, I have given you into your hand Sihon, the Amorite, the king of the Heshbon, and his land. Begin to possess it and engage him in battle. So we see God speaking to the Israelites here. He gave them a promise. He told them something. He says, I'm giving you that land to possess. Amen. Amen? He wants them to go and contend in battle. If you really said he's going to give it to me, he wants it to go and fight for it. Mm-hmm. So it means the fact that he says, I've given you that land, I've given it into your hand, mm-hmm. begin to possess it and engage in that. Mm-hmm. So many of us read the last part and we say, You, they must go and fight for it, but what if they die and they want to possess the land? Mm-hmm. But the fact that God told them that, says that he's going to carry them through that battle. And they will possess it. Amen? Amen. So our our thing, our our whole answer to that is God going to give it to them. The start should be God will give it to them. So no matter how hard the devil will fight them in that battle, they will take possession of it. It will be theirs because it's already done. It's in God's word. Amen? All it requires of them now is to go and fight. Amen? So, he's already given them the solution. They must go contend and fight. I've given it to you. That's what he said. So each time you're in a battle, know that God already gave you the victory. He's already given it to you. Amen? All you need to do is engage your faith. So example, another example is if you're challenged, you go to Psalm 23 verse 1. And if you feel challenged, you go to that, cha- that Psalm 23 verse 1 that says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen? Amen. When you experience in lack, you, you go to Psalm 34 verse 10. It says, The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good Amen. So we see that your answer begins to fight. 
So you see, God told them to rise up. God told them you will possess it. We even see, look at Moses. He told them that he will give them the land flowing with milk and honey. Amen. Amen. So when Moses sent the spies out to go and check out the land, they didn't see the land of milk and honey. They were focused on the giants that was in the land. So they were already looking at the, the giants. And God didn't say, I'm giving you the giants. He said, I'm giving you the land. He said, don't worry about the ugly enemy. They're not going to pull you down because I'm going to be with you in that fight. Amen. Amen. The whole of the New Testament, we see fight, the fighting being very physical and very practical. But in the New Testament, we see that the fight becomes spiritual, but it has an impact on the physical. That it will affect you physically. When the devil attacks your mind, he attacks you with, maybe he attacks you with, with pain in your body, you feel the effects in your body. So you feel it, feel it physically, but it's a spiritual attack. You've got to recognize what it is. Amen? So one cannot always, the one fight you cannot always see, but you will feel it. Because the source of it is spiritual. You need to be aware of it. You hear people, they, when they feel they are under attack, or the enemy is come to attack them, they start putting on their combat boots and they roll the tire, and then they start what, they jumping up and down, stepping on the devil's head. Mm. Why? Why? Your, your, your warfare is not physical. You need to engage your spiritual realm. You need to engage your faith. And that's how you fight. Amen? Amen. You're not going to go put on the combat regalia and, and the whole outfit and you're going to go to war. No. The devil laughs at you. Mm. Those people, the devil is laughing at them. You see them go pray for hours. It doesn't make the devil stop. They go, they face that issues all over again. The devil's right laughing at them. Because they don't realize that the fight that they have is a spiritual fight and you cannot fight it physically. You see, it's a spiritual thing. So the only weapon you can use to, be, to, to fight in a spiritual war the only weapon you can use is the weapon of faith. Amen? You can only handle it with faith. With faith that's in your heart. That's why you need to get the word on the inside of you. So that that word can be expressed when you feel challenged. So that that word can come up on the inside of you. You can speak that word and chase them out. Amen? Amen? Amen. That's what you need to do. 1 Timothy 6.12 I'm going back to that verse again. It says, fight the good, fight of faith. It's telling you to lay hold of eternal life, to which you were also called, and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. So we see it says, fight the good fight of faith. It's called the good fight of faith, not the bad fight. Amen. Amen, because it's a fight of the faith. It's telling you there, lay hold, lay hold of eternal life. Not to lay hold of something is to take possession of something. Mm. It's to take something. Mm. So meaning whatever you want, you take a hold of it. Amen? Amen. By faith, you believe that you have received it. The word of God says, and you will have it. Yes. So you take it, you receive it, and you possess it. That's how you lay a hold of something. Mm. Amen? So, how do we lay hold? We express our faith and we possess it through our words. That's how we lay hold on it. We express our faith and we possess it through our words. Like we hold, lay hold of eternal life. Remember when you gave your heart to the Lord, to Jesus? You had to openly declare the heart. You had to confess Him as your Lord. So the same way when you're in a fight, you confess what you believe, you confess your faith. Amen? Amen? So 
like I said, the same way you lay hold of eternal life, everything that is good, we possess it with the hands of faith. Faith has hands. Amen? Amen? You cannot feel it physically, but you will possess it. Amen? Amen? And you possess it through your words, through confessing faithful words. Amen? Amen? So, when symptoms come your way, we lay a hold of what we have. There will be three witnesses. The first witness is reality. The second witness is reality is what you're facing. The second one is words. What are you saying? The third one is the affirmations of your words. So you confess the word of God. You affirm his word and you lay hold of it through your confession. Amen? So you lay hold of something through confessing. That is why he says, open up your mouth. So, you will have it permanently. You keep laying hold of it until you fully experience it. Amen? Amen? For example, if you have symptoms of lack, the enemy will come and say, look, you've got no money. Look, you're badly. But you say, God is going to give you this. You say, I'm blessed. The enemy comes with those things. And the enemy will say, sure, you're really blessed. There's enough food in your house. Mm-hmm. You only my response in that situation will be say, no, no. I have it because God is supplying all my needs. Yeah. His word tells me. Yeah. Amen? Amen? All my needs, each and every one. When you do that, you are laying hold of provision. This is the good part. This is how you lay hold of something. The enemy is going to come with all sorts of things. It's going to come to your mind. Because you won't see him physically. You won't see that little devil jumping up and down the country. Amen. It's a spiritual fight. And you can only fight you through your mind. Amen? So, how do I lay hold of it? By confessing. When I'm experiencing symptoms in my body, I say, no, no, no. I am healed. Amen? Amen? Lay hold of what you believe. You speak it out. You can't be speaking it in your mind because you're not. He's just going to keep giving you more sometimes. You got to utter it. Amen. Amen. You need to say, "I'm possessing my healing. It will be mine permanently." Amen. He, no one thing. The enemy will always come. He will keep trying to come back. He will keep coming. But until you fully lay a hold of that healing until you lay a hold of that promise of provision, that promise that God is more than enough. Yes. Until you are fully aware of it, yes. that you keep confessing it. Mm-hmm. Because the enemy, like I said, you will keep coming and eventually you'll get tired of coming because you keep chasing him away. Mm-hmm. You keep giving him the word of God. Mm-hmm. You cannot stand it. Amen? Mm-hmm. It's pointless playing with him in your head because he'll just use you further into it. Amen. Amen? Amen? So now when he sees you fully laying hold of something and you are not shaken, you're not moved by whatever, how strong that pain comes or how bad the situation becomes, he will leave you in that area because he knows now you've left. And now this fully persuaded that I'm fully healed. And now this persuaded God you. That enemy is going to run away. He's going to stay away. Amen? Amen? Just like you know your name. Just like you know your name is a welder. That is our persuaded you to be about your faith. Just like you know one plus one is two. Without even having to think about it. That's how you need to be about the word of God. Amen? Amen? You need to know that it's yours. No matter what it feels like. No matter what it looks like. No matter what it seems. No matter how bad that situation is. You need to know, you need to stand on what you believe God has said in His Word. Amen? Amen. Amen. You need to lay a hold of it and say, I don't care. I lay a hold of it.
hold of my healing. I lay a hold of my blessing. I lay a hold of that job that God has promised me. I lay a hold of that house God has promised me. I lay a hold of that car God has promised me. I lay a hold of the promise of salvation of my loved ones. You lay a hold of it. Amen. Like I said, you lay a hold of eternal life when you accept Jesus. The same way you need to take it. Amen. Amen. So many don't know how. And the fact is they will never know how God will do something. All you have to do is to keep fighting that good fight of faith. That's why we always need to, we will always walk in victory when we keep confessing our faith. When we keep fighting it with our words. Amen? Amen. Let me make you a statement. You are not fighting people. We don't fight them. They are not our problem. Our fight is not between me. It's not between them. Your fight is between you and the devil. He is the source of the fight. So that's between you and that thoughts he's throwing at you. Why I say you don't fight the devil physically, you can't fight him. Because like I said in John 16.33, John 16.33, Jesus already conquered him. In verse 33 says, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you will have peace. In my world, in the world you will have tribulation. And he says, but be of good cheer, be of good cheer. Mm -hmm. I overcome the world. So you see, he already overcame the devil. The problem is not you and the devil because Jesus already defeated him. Amen? So there's no need to fight it. Because God, Jesus already overcame it. Another thing I want to make, make you aware of is Romans 16.20. Romans 16, 20 says, And the God of, of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our, God, uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. So we see, it says the God of peace says that he's under our feet. So how can you fight someone that's under your feet already? If you are here, yeah, I can fight someone down like there. So you see how I may be taught in that we need to go and fight the devil. That's ignorance. That's not knowing the word of God. Because if they knew the word of God, they would have known this verse that said that he crushed him under his feet. So we are not fighting the devil. We are not fighting the devil at all. Amen? Amen. Because Jesus already defeated him. So we are not fighting the devil at all. Because Jesus already did. He won that fight. Amen? Colossians 2 verse 15 says, Colossians 2 verse 15 saying, he says, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. So here it's speaking of Jesus and how he made a spectacle of the devil. And how he trampled over every demon. So, are we fighting the devil? Are we fighting the devil? No, because Jesus already did that. Amen? Amen. So, as far as Jesus, God is concerned, it's already done. Your healing, your prosperity, your job, your breakthrough, it's already done. He's trying over it for you. It's waiting for you. 1 John 4, 4 says, 1 John 4, verse 4, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So you already overcame. You overcame poverty. You overcame sickness. You overcame disease. You overcame lack. You overcame all of these things. 
when Jesus overcame me, the devil, you already overcame. Those things were already in place. Amen? And because we are called here, we, he refers to us as little children. So because we are his children, because Jesus overcame them, that's ours. Amen? Amen? So your fight is not against the devil. Once this is settled on you, you already, you will already be functioning as a son of God, as a daughter of God. And once you get that reality, something to you. Amen? And you see Jesus did it? Negotiate with the devil. You can say, devil needs to leave. Devil, why did you come now? Because that's a lot of Christians do. They are like, devil, now we go. Can you please leave? No. Jesus didn't entertain him. Each time he tried to come, Jesus told him to go. Jesus told him, get out. Amen. Jesus kicked him out. Amen. Amen. And this must be your story as well. Hallelujah. This is the same way we are supposed to respond in order to operate it the way he said. Because he said, as he is, so are we. Amen. So if we are like him, we're supposed to be kicking the devil out. Amen. The same way he is, we're supposed to get up. Amen. Amen. So, you are like Jesus now. Amen. It might not look like it. It might not look to others like it. It might Amen. not seem like it. It might not feel like it. But you are like him. Amen. 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 Your fight is not against the devil. Many people misinterpret this verse. Ephesians 6 verse 10. Ephesians 6 verse 10. Let us read Ephesians 6 verse 10. I'm going to read up to verse 13. It says, Finally, my brethren, finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Verse 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God, that you are able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. 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 Verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. He is telling us what to do. Verse 13. Take up the whole armor of God. Take up the whole armor of God. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Having done all to stand. So he's telling you to put on the armor that you will be able to stand against it. What are we standing against? Against the wiles of the devil. Amen? Not powers of the devil because the devil is powerless. Amen. That's why I say we're standing against the wiles. That's what we are fighting. Amen. And we didn't know what wiles are. Wiles are the lies that he gives us. Those thoughts that he gives you. That thinking, that stupid stuff that he puts in your head. And you think, why am I thinking like this? Amen. Why am I feeling so? Amen. It's the devil. That's the wild he throws at you. So your battle is between you and those thoughts that the enemy throws at you. The wild. So because of the power, his power being taken away, he has no power over you. So he cannot defile you as a child of God. So we need to stand against his wiles. This is where our fight is. Our fight is in our thoughts. In our thoughts. As long as you dominate him in your thoughts, you will never own him. This is where your battle is. It is through the teaching, then you, you get thoughts. Or preachers will say, if you don't die, you will be cursed. If you don't give into this church, God is going to curse you. We are told wrong stuff. Yeah. And people believe it. So then they go around with their whole thing. I'm cursed, yes. I'm cursed. They pass the told me I'm cursed because I didn't give in this church. And you believe those lies. Amen. But Galatians 3.13 tells us that Christ has redeemed us 
Amen. from the curse of the Lord. But becoming the curse for us. The word of God says, I am blessed. Amen. I am not cursed. Amen. I am the blessing of Abraham. Amen. That blessing that he possessed is on me. Amen. So no, I can never be cursed. Amen. That needs to be your response. Amen. When the enemy comes and says, when are you cursed? Look, things are not coming right in your life. Look, things are just like this. That's when you give me that word. Amen. That's when you stand. You say, no, no. I am the blessed of the Lord. Amen. 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 I am blessed. Amen. You need to fight that thought as soon as it comes into your head. Hallelujah. You shouldn't allow it. You shouldn't even allow yourself to think on it. Amen. Amen. You shouldn't allow that thing to be actually have a moment more than what it should. Amen. As soon as it comes, when he says, be cursed. Amen. Ah, I'm poor. Ah, I'm sick. Amen. Ah, I'm feeling depressed. Amen. Oh, oh. Maybe I should just kill myself. That's what he does. He'll tell you, oh, look, nobody cares about you. Yeah. And then you believe it, and you say, oh, yeah, nobody cares about me. The minute you even give it more, more, the minute you take it, pay attention to it and start acting like that, he will bring you a stronger thing and a stronger one. Oh, yeah. And that's how he defeats you. Amen. Amen. So this is where the battle is. So when he comes with those symptoms, when he comes with those lines, when he comes and tells you that maybe you're suicidal, maybe you're depressed, that's when you stand up and you tell him, no, this is a lie. I am blessed. I am healed. Amen. 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 You stand and you walk in that dominion. The battle is between your thoughts and your mind. That is why the word of God says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's why he says, put on the full armor of God. When you put on the armor, it's when you get into this word and this word gets on the inside of you. That is the armor that you and I are meant to be wearing. Amen? Amen. So when trickery and the lies and the, and the deception comes, this is how you need to open it. And you will see, he will not be powerful. Amen? Amen. But he's only able to get to you through those thoughts. He will give you something. He will tell you, look, it's bad. Look, the events are coming back. And then you turn around and say, no, no, I'm already healed. He has healed me, I'm not going to accept it. Amen. Amen? Amen? It becomes a battle between your feelings and your thoughts. Amen. That's when you need to open up your mouth and say, no, the word of God says, I am healed. This is the way you fight by saying, no. Amen? You fight those thoughts. He will throw a thought at you. You will see. You will, the thought, you will see. Don't be tempted. Don't agree to it. Just say, no, yeah. I am not. I am blessed. Oh. That's where this, this fight for faith is. Amen. 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 When there's no money in your hand, when there's no money in your bank account, yes. that's when you say, I am blessed. Amen. Money is here. Amen. I can't be broke. Amen. I am I am not broke. Yes. My father owns the silver and the gold. Amen. 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 My father owns a cattle and a thousand years. Amen. 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 He says the thing, the things of the earth belong to us. So we need to stand on those things. He says that we are blessed. He said we are blessed coming in and we are blessed going out. Amen. Amen. So see how he will throw these things on you. And if you ponder it, if you allow it, you will just bring more. Yes. Amen. Amen. The things will get worse. He's waiting for you to confess those things is planted in your mind. He's waiting for it. Remember, we are taught that they are angels and they are genius. They are waiting for you to say the right thing, to make that right. So when you start confessing those thoughts, that's when his demons go to work and he makes it worse. Oh, yeah. Amen? He's waiting for you. Mm. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
There's a principle that says you will have what you say. So he's waiting for you to kill yourself by means of that thought that you still imagine. Amen? This is why when this thought comes, when that feeling comes, we are meant to reject it. We are meant to say no. Amen? Amen. Not me. You may feel fear. Yes, fear is real. Mm -hmm. That's a feeling of fear or come on you. But you need to stand up. You need to say, in the name of Jesus, fear, get out of me. Amen? Amen. You need to talk to it, and it will leave you. Your fight is between your feelings and your thoughts. Amen? Amen? Amen. Today we see that in some churches they are so devil focused. Everything is the devil this, the devil that. The word says, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So if all you hear is the devil, the devil, the devil is there. Amen? Amen. So people give him power that he doesn't have. He never possessed that power, but you are going to give it to him each time you focus on him. Amen? Remember that we are dominion over and above him. We are in dominion only because, remember, God crushed him under our feet. So we have dominion over him. He's beneath us. Amen? So he cannot do anything to you. Because you are far above him. We need to get that into our consciousness. We need to get that into our thoughts. And we need to speak it more often. Amen? Amen. So, how can you operate far above principalities and powers if all you, you ever do is entertain the wiles of the devil? Like I said, you are far above it. Amen. 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 We need to get that on the inside of us. Get it into our consciousness. We need to speak it. We need to dominate it. Our fight is between feelings, thoughts, symptoms, symptoms of lack. We need to resist it. Amen. See how we are fighting the wrong way. The fights are in our thoughts. Amen? Amen? When the pain comes, yes, you will say, look, it's come back. Look, it's worse now than it was before. I think you need to go see the doctor. <laughs> but that's when you need to stand up and say, no. You will say it's getting worse. You will say, no, nah, you didn't get that way. That's when your faith needs to rise up on the inside of you. Amen. And say, Satan, you are a liar. Mm -hmm. I am healed. I am the healed of the Lord. Amen. 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 I know you are liar. Amen. 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 I have my healing. Yes. Not I'm getting healed. Mm -hmm. I have it already. Amen. 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 You need to expose him. You need to stand up against those thoughts. Mm -hmm. Amen. You don't fight the symptoms. What also the symptoms are in your body? Amen. Amen. Your fight is the thoughts. Not to give in to it. Amen? Amen? So if he comes to you and says, you broke, say, no, money is coming. Amen. He said so. And you keep maintaining that. God is giving me money. That is how you fight him. It's through speaking, through declaring. He will run away. But our fight is there. He's resisting the thoughts. That is spiritual work. It's taking authority. It's saying, enough, symptoms will come, but you need to open up your mouth and resist it. You need to say, no, I do not receive it. Amen? Amen. You need to identify when the devil is throwing a thought at you, Amen. and you need to cast it out. Negative thoughts from the devil. Amen. That is clear as day. Amen? Amen? God won't give you negative thoughts. Negative thoughts are from the devil. He will make you feel sorry for yourself. He will beat you through that thoughts. He will make you cry and think you're worthless. And he will say to you, you're not special. This is the time that you engage in God. This is the time when you say, God gave me Jesus because he believes I'm in you. He loves me and you are alive. You, you cannot see him that is trying to talk to you through the thoughts. Feelings and thoughts are real from the You need to 
Fast in mind. This is where our faith fight lies. I can say if anyone wants to run up to a mountain, to go fight that spiritual warfare. And when they may pray there for days on the mountain top. But it doesn't scare the devil. Mm-hmm. What scares him are the words that you give him. Amen. Amen. Are the words of God that says that causes him to run away. That causes him to leave you alone. The moment you speak to take that thought and say it, you are taking it. Like you lay hold of faith. Like you lay hold of the confession. The moment you accept that thing, the moment you say it, mm-hmm. you've taken hold of it. Mm-hmm. Amen? So don't let him talk you out of what God has said. Mm-hmm. See where the battle is. When he says you don't have enough money, we tell him no. Take that money that you have when you go and see it. Mm-hmm. And you see God providing more than mm-hmm. what you need. Mm-hmm. I, I was listening to somebody. Um, another pastor a while back and he was under so much attack from the enemy attacked him the enemy kept throwing things at him and then he said devil next time you attack me I'm going to get more people into my church I'm going to train them up and they're going to become disciples and that that is what he's doing and he said for every attack that comes another person will be (laughs) we need can we do that through doing a prayer of Jesus? Amen. Amen. So Jesus fought in the same way. When Jesus was in that predicament, he resisted the thought that came. When the devil said to him, when the devil told him, Jesus, if you are the Son of God, there was a verse in the Bible where he said, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself on the earth. Throw yourself to this moment. But look at the statement that he used. Because God didn't call Jesus the Son of God. He called him out of love and Son. So the enemy will twist. Will twist things and make it seem real, but it's not. Amen. 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 So the verse is we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's what he told us. So how do we fight? How does the devil fight you? It's through wilds. So you need to stand against the wilds. All the spiritual wickedness in high places that he's talking about in that verse is the wilds of the enemy. He speaks of the breastplate of righteousness. This points to the word of God. You need to put on the word of God. This is why the word of God is to be on the inside of you. So it can be comfort effects against those lies that he's throwing at you. Amen? Amen? This is where our fight is. The devil wants to put us where we think. Mm-hmm. Amen? Mm-hmm. He wants us to think like that. He wants us to say something so that when you say it, you partake of it. Amen? Amen? Amen. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3 says, But I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by a crafty, by his craftiness, so your mind may be corrupted from simplicity that is in Christ. So the fight between you and your thoughts, you need to resist it. Paul said that he comes through lies and tickling. He says he deceived Eve through his craftiness. You see, he, can, he cannot force his way out. He cannot force you, so you can't subtly. You come with something very certain. That is why the battle is in your mind. Those lies that come to you. Amen? Amen. So through, through subtlety, not through power, it comes. It comes because it cannot kill you, but your thoughts, but through your thoughts, that's how it is you. But you need to answer him back. You need to shut down the minute he sends it to you. But when you don't take it, but when you don't take it, it won't matter. Amen? Amen. Spiritual warfare is not fought on the mountain. Amen? Amen. That's taking authority. 
word. It's having the understanding of the word of God that makes you powerful, that makes you to dominate. And in conclusion, I will go to 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we don't walk in the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. And here's verse 5, it says, casting down arguments. Some of it says, casting down vain imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Anything that comes into your mind that, that contradicts what God's word says. That's what he's saying. Amen. 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 You need to bring everything into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And be ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Amen. 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 So we don't war in the flesh. We don't war after the flesh. We do not war in the flesh. The next verse says, but strongholds. So you will send stupid images to your mind. We will show you a picture of you lying in the body. We will show you pictures of you lying on the bed in the We will show you pictures of you living on the street. But when those things come, those images that you want to project, you open up your mouth and you shut it down. Oh, yes. You stay in the realm of faith all times. That's how you bring them into captivity. Every thought that he has been put in your way. Amen. 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 See, faith is speaking. To fight the good fight of faith is watching what you say and what you are allowing to come on the inside of you. Amen. So we know now that the enemy will fight us. We need to pull ourselves up on the word of God so we are able to overcome him and access the promises and the miracles that God has for us that we are meant to be working with every day. Amen. Amen. So are you ready? Oh, yes. Are you ready to fight the battles of the devil? Are you prepared for the lies he's going to throw as you leave here tonight? Amen. He's going to come. Amen. Because he's going to come and shake you to receive him. Amen. 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 Only if you're a word up yes. can you walk in victory. This is the only way that enemy will lead you out. Amen. 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 So we better get word up. Be prepared because he's going to come. He's going to come to test the that word that's taken around you. If you believe that word. Amen? Amen. 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 Oh, Are you blessed? Oh, yeah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.